Hi folks, our deep freeze at home got shut off. Let's use an Arduino to make an alarm so we'll know next time. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. We're gonna use an Arduino Nano, a breadboard, a temperature sensor, an LED, and a little project box. The idea here is quick, cheap, and simple. The backstory here, my wife, she's actually due with our second baby any day. Uh, God bless her, she spent a few nights pre-making like some meals that she could freeze, like stuffed peppers and stuff. Um, and uh, we also just have beef and other food and the deep vegetables in the deep freeze. And our silly deep freeze has a knob on the side, on the floor, which lets it which you can adjust the temperature or even turn it off, which I would say is a major design flaw. And I think one of William's toys must have pushed it or rotated it. So let's create a temperature sensor that'll have a light that stays lit. And if the light's out, we've got a problem. That way we know if the Arduino fails or we lose power to the Arduino, but not the deep freeze. Basically, if the light's off, something's wrong, we need to take a look. Bill of Materials is in the video description. This is, I think, a knockoff of an Arduino Nano, but worked fine for us. And if you buy this flat wire that's uh, male to female here, you can tear off a strip. What I like about this is it's flat, so hopefully that's gonna let us run it through the deep freeze opening and still keep a seal. We bought the temperature from SparkFun, but Adafruit, to be honest, sells the same one with a better picture. I love pictures, so we hold it like this with the flat toward us and stick our cable on here. I like the fact that these are snug. We're gonna glue these on at the end too, by the way. Okay, so the first one on the left is, is the voltage in, which will take 2.7 up to five. So that for me is gonna be my five volts on the Arduino, like so. The middle one is analog out. The last one is black, which goes to ground like so, and we'll hook our LED up. The long leg goes to, we'll say D13, and the negative goes to ground. The SparkFun webpage for the temp sensor, the, I think it was the first comment right here, had some code. Um, I started by copying and pasting that code into an Arduino sketch. Uh, when I did that, it looked kind of like this, so we'll make the code available in the video description, and we've got it formatted uh, correctly as you can see here. The one problem that uh, we had when we pasted the code was it had quotes, and, and you need not quotes, but this, I don't know what that character is, but quotes will give you an error when we pasted it. And I'll show you this, uh, you know, these little things right there that are the more, they're just the wrong character for Arduino. Um, so all we did to change it was I added a pin 13 as an output pin. So that's our light here and we're gonna start with it high, which turns it on. This is all the same code. We're reading uh, the voltage out of our temp sensor. That's what's kind of cool. The way this thing works is it just needs, it looks at the volt, outputs the voltage based on temperature. I don't, I believe you don't even need to calibrate it. We'll take a look at that. And then there's this formula that converts those volts into, uh, you know, this divide by 205, converts that into then Celsius, and then that into Fahrenheit which works for me. It does a serial print showing these two temps. So what I did was I said, okay, if the temperature in Fahrenheit is greater than the alarm temperature, which right now we've got at 82 degrees so we can test it here in the shop, uh, then turn the light off. Otherwise, if the temperature in Fahrenheit is less than or equal to the alarm temp, so in other words, if it's 82 or below, then keep the light on. So we'll change that to probably, you know, 32 when we put this in the deep freeze here. But let's, uh, let's power it up here and give it a shot. I forgot I gotta uh, put a jumper between my ground rail and the ground on the Nano here. Like so. Okay, upload the code. Serial monitor. So it's reading 86 degrees Celsius. Let's use our little temp gun here. And the shop I'm reading right now is about 78 degrees. So um, this I don't know if is technically correct to do, but if we look at this Celsius temp range, uh, we can just say minus say 54 
and I'm okay with that because I'm not worried about measuring real close temperature ranges. I'm trying to figure out if my really cold freezer is getting warm, which will be a 10 or 20 or 30 degree uh, temperature swing. No, oh, how about that? 78, 79, 78. So that's actually, coincidentally, pretty close. These, by the way, I think are, are decently accurate, except on shiny or reflective surfaces. At least it's, that's what I'm told, but for, I don't know, 20 bucks, you gotta have one of these things. Awesome, so the light's on, which is what's gonna be the normal day happening. If I start to warm this thing up, though, 79, 83, boom. It's off, it's warm, rising, it's 87, 88. Now if I let go, in fact, if I blow on it, it may cool off quicker. 84, 84, 83, 82, 81, boom. Uh, it's teetering here. Sweet, we're back on. So pretty simple Arduino code, which is what I love. Pull our sensor off for now. I think, take a look, if we move this back to say here, oh, and don't worry about my light. This will almost fit in this, and I think it will fit if we cut these little tabs off. Perfect. So that would, that'll put us in here. Let's peel off for fear of commitment. Let's just take a portion of that thing off because I bet it'll stay. And I'll ground out this. Let's actually use some hookup wire here. Okay. So I like to throw some heat shrink tubing over this, at least for now to keep that in, in place. Okay, so let's go notch out a section for our USB cable and the uh, sensor leads. Okay, let's put a hole here for the light. Sharp tool to get my spot. That's fine. So it's gonna want to grab. Well, oh, that's actually done, cutting well. No, oh, that cut great. Awesome. I don't even think I need to use uh, glue. I think this thing has enough taper to where it'll just kind of press in there. Well, we'll take a look. Easy to add some if we need to. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna bend it. Yeah, see it pops out. Bend it this way. Bend the leads over. So white was the positive, so that's the 13 pin. Black was ground and See here, I wanted this to go plug it in, actually. Get in there. <laughs> okay, so now I got my temp sensor uh, out here and let's try plugging it into the power wall power and you know what I just realized that uh, I already updated the code for 32 degrees so we're gonna have to just uh, yeah let me fix that that's worth that's an easy fix 
uploading it at uh, the room temperature temps it's on. So if I warm it up here by holding on, boom, goes off. Turn this, stop touching it, it's cooling down. It kind of bounces back and forth a few times. We're good, we're back off. Let's mix some five minute epoxy to pod in some of these connections. So here's the thing, I'm gonna pot in the leads here so they don't come out, but also I don't want moisture condensation to short these out. I'm gonna try not to pot much of the sensor itself because I suspect that thing needs to have a, you know, be touching the ambient temperature, if you will. In other words, I'm sure potting would change how it functions. Sometimes it's better to wait and let this stuff set just a little before you work it so runny. There's plenty of this sensor still exposed, well, and we'll test it. If it, if it doesn't work because it's too uh, covered up, well, we'll fix that. This one, honestly, heat shrink tubing probably would have been better for this joint here, but it's okay. So as soon as it gets down to temp, which may take a minute, our light should come on, and then it should stay on uh, so long as the fridge is deep freezes cold. Awesome. Look at that. Awesome. Okay, so it's on. It did take, oh, I don't know, a minute to uh, get down to temp. So let's just pull it out. Pull it off the tape. Oh, that was quick. Yeah, holy cow. Okay, put it back in. Interesting, it bounces around here just for a minute as it's going down, should stabilize. Awesome. Folks, thank you. I am so excited to be back. To have an electronics bench again is just so much fun. We've got the 440 automation. Next week or maybe the week thereafter, we're automating the coolant system on our, our, on our Tormach lathe. Uh, I've got some other really fun, uh, sort of trying to combine all of this stuff, electronics, motors, sensors, machining. That's what I love. Uh, I really appreciate the enthusiasm, the thumbs up, the support. Again, thank you folks. Hope you guys learned something. Hope you enjoyed. How cool is this? And it's so inexpensive. Like, and it doesn't even look, I mean, it doesn't look that bad. So, folks, I appreciate it. Take care. See you next Wednesday. The awesome steampunk glasses were from a really cool guy I met at the Barzy Summer Bash, actually the second year in a row. Uh, I don't remember your name. I'm sorry, please mention it in the comments or shoot us an email because I, I appreciate it. He gave us these. He gave us some really cool Arduino accessories, stepper drivers, and all that. Um, and these glasses were pretty, uh, were pretty rad. I think I've got the wires a little haywire right now with the, uh, there we go. That looks a little bit better. Also a ham radio guy, which I wish I had more free time because ham radio is something I'd love to learn too. Add it to the list.